Um, in 2001, I came in as the new manager of CBC in Toronto, and Metro Morning's the morning show in Toronto. The most important thing we did was start to talk to our team about creating programming that actually looked and sounded like the city. Looked in terms of who the presenters and people behind the scenes were who were making the decisions, and sounded in terms of it's an oral medium, but the choices we make in terms of the stories we tell and the people we cast in those stories are absolutely critical. So w what we aimed to do in 2001 was to create programming that looked and sounded like the city of Toronto in all its richness and diversity. That's the biggest thing and that's the smallest thing. It sounds really simple. It actually took years to achieve. Um, well, everyone in the CBC has their own morning show, and I think CBC has 12 morning shows that are in the top three in their cities. Uh, everyone's doing something different because the makeup of their communities is different. So it's really the authentic reflection of your community. So in Toronto, for example, you have over 140 communities. In Halifax, where I used to work, it's easier in that you have the oldest Indigenous black community, which is um, historically totally underrepresented on the airwaves. So if you're in Halifax, you might want to target that community, underrepresented now to, to this day to some extent, um, to make inroads into, to make contacts into, and to tell more of those stories. In Winnipeg, for example, and this is what I mean by it's different depending on the city you're in, in Winnipeg it's the fastest growing urban Indian community, both Ojibwe and Cree. So if you want to make inroads into the largest untapped segment of the population in Winnipeg, then you, you're going to be strategic in terms of those decisions that you make around hiring. Um, and it really does come down to hiring. Hiring is absolutely key. You have to create the team that can create the product that shows the understanding, the depth and the insight into reflecting that community. And um, that's really what we did in Toronto. There are glimpses of it across the country. Um, I would have to say that we did share our plan far and wide, and um, my executive producer, who is a stellar journalist, Joel Melanson, went out and developed training that could be taken into all of our CBC stations. We've done about 12 markets now on how to identify your key target audiences and how to make strategic editorial choices to be more relevant to those, those communities. I think, um, for, well, for the public broadcaster, we exist uh, to serve the public. And the question becomes, who's public? Which public? Uh, when we made our changes in Toronto in 2001, 2002, we had a sizable audience, but largely older and largely non-diverse. And that's very typical for CBC audiences. I think there's a, a, an embedded fear that if we become more relevant to people here or people here that somehow we might lose the people here who are our core. Certainly there was pushback when we made our changes it wasn't easy or simple or straight ahead but I think we've proven that you know if you're confident stay the course and continue to be um, more reflective of and thus more relevant to more people you will grow audience. We didn't actually lose our core it looked like we had uh, some six months after we made our changes, we had our ratings period and it dropped. And for anyone who was struggling with the whole thing, they were, they were like, aha, see, um, this does not work and all we're doing is losing our core audience. But one year after we made our changes, we went to number one for the first time in our history. We've been number one in mornings 24 times uh, since then.